close your eyes, focus on your breath, watch it as it comes in, watch it as it goes out, all the way in, all the way out. You don't want the mind to slip off anyplace else, so try to be as continuous as you can in your awareness of the breath. Let the breath be comfortable. If the breath is comfortable, let that comfortable sensation spread throughout the different parts of the body. This way it makes it easier for the mind to stay here in the present moment with more consistency. That means you too. <laughs> you have a breath just like everybody else. Okay. Watch your breath. We're trying to get the mind to be bright here in the present moment. This is the, we're approaching the the beginning of the rains retreat right now. So today we're going to have a candle pouring cer ceremony and we're going to be cleaning up the sala. And it's symbolic of what you have to do with your own mind. You want to make the mind bright, you want to make the mind clean. And so as you're watching the breath, any thought that comes comes through, just think it as a cloud coming across the mind. Just let it go away, let it pass by. You don't have to try to jump on the cloud, because you know what happens when you jump on clouds, you go right through. There's really nothing there. And yet we p allow these things to pull us away and defile the mind, darken the mind. So try to clean up your mind right now and brighten the mind as well. Because the mind that's really aware in the present moment is a lot brighter than the mind that's thinking about other things. But all too often, we're often in different kinds of delusions. Some kinds of delusion are actually easy to see. Like when you're in the middle of the night, you know it's dark, you can't see anything. Or at night, sometimes a cloud comes across the moon and it gets darker, and then the cloud goes away and it gets brighter. That kind of delusion is easy to see. The hard part is the delusion that's like fog. It looks bright, but you can't see anything. All you see is the fog. To see through that kind of delusion, we have to be really careful. This is why we have to focus our attention on the present moment as much as we can. And watch what we're doing. When you're going to say something, when you're going to do something, ask yourself, what are you planning to do? What are the results of that action? What results do you anticipate? Are they going to be good or are they going to be bad? Are they going to be harmful to yourself or harmful to other people? If they're going to be harmful, you don't do it. And then while you're acting, you watch your actions to see what's actually happening, what kind of results are actually coming from your actions, because sometimes you had a mistaken idea about what was going to happen. Well, if you see that it was actually causing harm, then you stop. If it's not causing harm, you can continue with it. And then when it's done, you look back and what you've done. Okay, what were the results? Did it lead to, ha lead to happiness or did it lead to suffering? Did it lead to well-being or did it lead to harm? If it led to harm, then you resolve you're not going to repeat that mistake again, and you go to talk it over with somebody you trust. So you get some ideas from them on how to act the next time around. And it's this same way that we overcome that delusion that's so hard to see, where we ordinarily assume that, well, everything I'm going to do is going to be good, and I can trust myself to act on good intentions, because sometimes there's things sneaking around inside your mind that you're not aware of, and they only come out when you're when you actually see the results of your actions. Now, if you deny the results of your actions, that makes it hard to see. That's how people stay deluded. But if you're willing to admit, oh, I made a mistake, that wasn't right, I'm going to resolve not to make that mistake again, that's how you get rid of that fog that obscures the mind. This way you get the light of the, the bright sun coming into the mind. So you know what you're doing, you know what you're saying, you know what you're thinking, and you know you're not causing anybody any harm. That's brightness right there. Because many of us go through life causing just a lot of harm to other people, sometimes not knowing what we're doing, and sometimes knowing what we're doing, but then telling ourselves, well, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter. This is the big issue in life, is what you're doing. The harm you're causing to yourself, the harm you're causing to other people. The harm you're causing to yourself is the suffering that eats away at the mind. That doesn't have to be there. And same with the harm that you cause other people. These things don't have to be there. So we try to clean up the mind by looking at our actions very carefully and, and holding on to that resolution that we don't want to harm anybody, either ourselves or other people. And if you can really stick with that, then the Buddha says that's what purifies your thoughts, purifies your words, purifies your deeds. This is how we become clean people. Being clean here is it's not a matter of how, how much dirt there is on your body or how little dirt there is on your body. It's how much harm your actions are causing. That's the stuff you've got to clean away. So to, to be clean in this way, you constantly look, be in the present moment and allow the breath to make it a comfortable place to stay. Because if you're going to be seeing your own mistakes or seeing the harm you caused, it's not easy. 
the mind's going to want to resist. It's going to going to want to deny it. So give it a good place to stay, put it in a good mood, so it's willing to admit, oh yeah, that was a mistake. That was beneath me. I shouldn't do that again. It's all very simple, but it takes a lot of determination. And the realization, this is the important issue in life. All too often we think of other things as being a lot more important, and we abandon our own responsibilities. And John Sawat used to say that each of us has only one person in this life, and that's ourselves. We're the only person we're really responsible for. Even with your own children, there's a lot that they're going to do and say and think that you have no control over. You can exert some influence on them, and try to make sure it's as good as possible, but there comes a point where they're going to be making their own choices. In the meantime, you want to make sure you're making your own choices right. And this applies in every situation. You can't be responsible for other people's choices, but you can be responsible for your own. So make sure that you provide a good example, being careful what you say, careful what you do, careful what you think. Like the acrobats, one acrobat's on top of another acrobat's shoulders. Each of them has to look after his or her own sense of balance. You can't be worried about the other person's sense of balance because you're going to lose yours, and both sides come tumbling down. But if you're looking after your sense of balance, the other person is looking after his or her sense of balance, you're going to come down safely. So to try to keep this thought in the mind that looking after your own actions is an act of kindness, not only to yourself but also to others. And it's this way that we develop some brightness and purity in our lives. 